What's up guys, Max here, coming to you from the Nevada desert. I'm here with Adam Ghazali, MD, PhD. He does a lot of fascinating work in the brain health space, and so I just wanna do this quick interview with him to uh, share some of his insights with you guys. So Adam, you're here speaking. What are you talking about exactly? Well, I was trying to present a vision of the future where we can improve our brains, not just with what we think of as traditional education and traditional medicine, which is largely pharmaceuticals, but using technology in a way to challenge our brains in a very targeted way to enhance our cognition, uh, refine our behavior, improve our mood. Uh, so that's what I wanted to share. Virtual reality, augmented reality, motion capture, AI, wearable physiological devices. I see all of these tools as being more than just entertainment more than communication and media, but actually ways of improving our brain function. It's fascinating. Now, this, this guy right here, I mean, he's dressed in further future garb, but, you know, multiple multiple times published uh, researcher. I've come across a lot of your work. I think what's really interesting is that many people think of video games as being something just purely to do for recreation, but you found actually that video games can have a really positive impact on cognitive health and function. Is that that's is that correct. accurate? Yeah, that's correct. We. Uh, we built a video game from scratch called NeuroRacer, working with uh, friends of mine that worked at LucasArts. I designed it, they developed it, and we did a series of studies showing that we could challenge an individual, like a old, healthy older adult, in a closed loop in the video game, so the video game is constantly adapting its challenge, scaling it to your abilities, and then improve cognitive abilities outside of the domain that was challenged in the game. Uh, so this was our way of developing at a high level and then validating and trying to create a essentially a new type of medicine, a digital medicine. That's a digital medicine. That's incredible. A lot of people, I often get asked the question of, um, you know, brain games, like more sim more simplistic games, like Sudoku, things like that. I mean, how do how do playing video games like the ones that you're creating in your lab differ from those kinds of like crossword puzzles and things like that? Well, I mean, games are a massive genre. This is something I find myself explaining all the time, like drugs or food. You know, there's many different approaches, some of which are positive, some of which might be negative, some of which might do nothing. So the idea of, of stimulating your brain and harnessing your plasticity, that's true. That's unde you know undeniably how our brain functions and how it modifies itself throughout our lifespan. But not everything you're going to do for your brain is going to be equally impactful in changing it. And so the type of uh, interactive media that we create is very immersive, engaging, and highly targeted to those systems we're trying to improve. And, you know, we're still figuring it out ourselves, but I think it comes down to uh, creating the type of experiences that people can become really, really deeply engaged in in order to change the brain and make it meaningful and sustainable. It's really all about experience. So essentially what I, what I think you're saying is that the, the broader the array of cognitive processes that the game can really draw on, the better it's going to be for your brain. The more it can sort of mimic having an, a real life adventure. Really. Yeah, in terms of the depth of engagement, that's cer certainly true. Um, many times we create games that are deeply immersive but are targeting a certain cognitive function like sustained attention or working memory. And then over time, what we're going to hopefully show is that the collection of games, what we call neuro crossfit training, where you have a personalized experience across several different games that are targeting different brain functions, this will lead to the type of improvement that we're trying to achieve. That's awesome. Do, do you feel like these games can benefit people that are cognitively normal? Like what, what kind of uh, population do you typically work with? Well, as a neurologist, we started with cognitively impaired populations, uh, Alzheimer's disease, and then moved into PTSD, traumatic brain injury, ADHD, autism, depression. But now our bigger vision is that a lot of these same games, the same type of closed loop interactivity might have a benefit in healthy developing minds. Think of it as like essentially a new type of education. Wow. Or that it might have value in healthy adults where it's like a reinvention in many ways of what we think of as wellness. So we have a very broad vision, but it's a hypothesis. Will the same game that challenges, let's say, sustained attention benefit an individual with Alzheimer's disease as well as a developing fifth grader. So Somebody that's Somebody with like ADHD, for yeah, example. Yeah, or even someone that's healthy, even as just a young person that needs more than just information content, but needs to actually build the information processing systems. So that's, uh, that's the uh, idea that we might see benefit across multiple different verticals. That's fascinating. Where can people go in, uh, to learn more about your work? Uh, we have a website, uh, Ghazali Lab. Uh, the quickest way to get there is gazlab.com, okay. uh, although it's an educational uh, facility and, and, and center. Um, but we have a newsletter and a whole bunch of information, all of our papers and the talks I give, a lot of them we post there. So that's probably the easiest way. That's awesome, you guys. So takeaway, video games, 
are not just for recreation, they can actually boost your brain health, brain function. It's an amazing thing. You're doing awesome work. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, brother. Cheers.